Okay, so now that we've um, kind of uh, understood the concept of the limit, and of course you still need to practice it a lot, but the next in line is discussion of continuity. Okay, and the definition is going to be extremely similar to the definition in one variable, and the theorems are going to be extremely similar, although they, we're going to have to state them carefully. So, um, the definition of continuity starts with a pointwise definition. So we say that I'm going to write it for a function of two variables, and it's easy to generalize to more variables. We say that fxy is continuous. Continuous at a point, at the point AB, if, what is the condition? Just like in Calc 1. Exactly. The limit of fxy as xy approaches AB this limit has to exist, and moreover, so this is like 99% of what you need to do is check that the limit exists, and then you need to verify that it's not just any L, but it's precisely the value of F at the point AB. Right? Does everybody recognize this? Okay. And you could, of course, insert into this expression the definition of the limit. So you can say if for any epsilon there exists a delta such that if the distance between xy and ab is less than delta, then the distance between fxy, and now not L, but fab, is less than epsilon. Okay, so you can insert the definition of the limit into the definition of continuity and get uh, a more complicated statement, but this is it. This is the, the definition. Clear? Okay. Now, this is continuity at a point. This is continuity in a point, and that's how we define continuity. Usually, our interest in this, in this topic, or at least our intuitive interest in this topic, is on a domain. Okay? We think of a, func of a function as continuous, when it's, you know, continuous, when we can draw it without lifting our pen off the board, right? Our marker off the board, or our pen off the paper, right? When, when it has no jumps or holds, or do you agree? Okay, so that's not continuity at a point, that's continuity on a domain. And how do we define a function? When do we say that a function is continuous on a certain domain D? When it's continuous at every point in that domain. Okay, so it's still a pointwise definition, just extended. So let's write that definition. Uh, F is continuous on D if it is continuous at every point um, xy in D. Now, there's a little issue here, a little issue here, which I'm going to kind of avoid, kind of avoid at this point, and that is, if D is open, if D is open, then every point in D has a neighborhood contained in D. Remember the definition of an open set? Okay, so if D is open, every point in D has a neighborhood in D, and we can discuss the continuity at every point. If D is not necessarily open, it could have boundary points, right? Points that are in D, but that don't have a neighborhood in D. And then you might ask, okay, how do we check continuity at a boundary point? And that's going to be similar to how you checked continuity on a closed interval. Remember, in, in Calc 1, when, you, when you, we discussed continuity on a closed interval, at every point inside the interval, it was just the definition of continuity. And then on endpoints, we had continuity from the left and continuity from the right. Remember that? Okay, at endpoints. So here, at, at boundary points, we're going to have to discuss only continuity when you approach from inside the domain or something like that. I don't want to get into the details. I want to avoid this. Okay? 
So this is the, the idea of continuity on a domain D. Okay, um, so, so I, I'm not going to spend time doing examples of checking continuity because it's not, it's, 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 it really boils down to nothing more than checking the limit. If the limit exists, and, and checking limits is something we explored already, then checking continuity is just checking that, that it equals the value at the point. Right? Everybody? And the theorem, the theorem that we already mentioned is when the function is elementary, then it's continuous at every point in its domain. Okay? Then the, the value of the limit at every point in the domain is exactly the value of the function at that point. Okay? And we use that extensively. Okay. So what I do want to mention is three theorems that are very, very important concerning continuous functions. And you know them already, but you know they're uh, a single variable uh, version, and I want to mention them in their multivariable version. So here they are. The first two um, are called Weierstrass theorem. Weier. Weierstrass. And they say the following. So the first one says, uh, if f from d to r is continuous so a continuous function on a domain d and we're going to require something about the domain do you remember what the requirement was in 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 calculus 1 D do you know what I what I mean when I say Weierstrass theorems okay that the function, fu continuous functions on certain domains are always bounded and have maximum, a maximum and a minimum, right? That's the theorem that I want to write. And what was the requirement on the domain in Calculus 1? Do you remember? It had to be a closed interval. Okay, remember that? Okay, good. So here we're going to replace it by being a closed and bounded um, so an interval by definition is bounded, right? It's not an infinite interval. So here we're going to say, if f from d to r is continuous and d is closed and bounded, bounded domain means it's contained in some ball. Remember that? In some neighborhood. And closed means it contains its boundary. Okay, every boundary point is, is also in it. Then, I want to move this, this one. So this is actually, this, whole, th this is the requirements for both uh, statements of the theorem. Then, one, f is bounded. It's a bounded function. Oops. Bounded. And two, any bounded function um, always has a, mac a, 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 a supremum and an infimum, right? But it doesn't necessarily have a maximum and a minimum, okay? So if you think, for example, one-dimensional, think of the function f of x equals x on the interval 0, 1. It doesn't have a maximum or a minimum value if the interval 0, 1 is open. Do you agree? It never reaches 1 never reaches zero, okay? But if it's closed, it does. So 2f has a minimum and a maximum. Okay? And just terminology-wise, uh, domains which are closed and bounded, I don't remember if we mentioned this word, there's one word for saying closed and bounded in, in, for domains in Rn, in R2 or R3, these domains are called compact. So if you ever see this word, a compact domain, it just means closed and bounded in Rn. In more general topological spaces, it has a more general meaning, but in Rn, R2 or R3, it just means closed and bounded. That's what compact means. 
Clear? Okay, so these are the Weierstrass theorems, and they're, they're very useful, right? When we do, when we investigate functions, and we want to know if a function, we want to find, find its uh, extremas, okay, find minimas, maximas, and so on, how do we know that they even exist? Okay, and we're going to see how we use this in, in multivariable, okay? If we're looking at a domain which is closed and bounded, in a compact domain, then we know that it has a minimum and a maximum. And if we find all the critical points, those minimum and maximum have to be among them. Okay, and we start screening using the first derivative test or the second derivative test or whatever. Okay, and we'll see that the, the multivariable generalizations of these things that you've done in Calc 1. Okay, okay so th I'm not going to prove these. The proofs are actually not too different from the one-dimensional proof, but we're just going to use these. I want to mention, however, one more theorem, and that theorem I want to discuss at more length. And that theorem is called the, the, um, the Intermediate Value Theorem. Okay? And um, since I want to discuss it at length, um, we're going to do it in, in the next uh, clip.